It's another beautiful day here in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. And I'm walking today with one of my favorite comedians, magicians. You've seen him on Conan, Last Comic Standing. But right now, it's rare actually that he's in New York because he is the first headliner, first comedian headliner in Cirque du Soleil history. Cirque du Soleil, maybe. I think I didn't say that right. Cirque du Soleil history. You can see him starring almost every night in Mad Apple in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, Harrison Greenbaum. Hello. This is so fun. To this have is you amazing. Back. I I love this area. Yes. I love the city. Yeah, I love. This is a special area for me too. Yeah. Because I lived for two years in that yes. building. Yes. Right. Can you see it? I don't think they can see it. Well, let's maybe we can walk by it. Yeah, your virginity entered that building, but it didn't leave. Did I tell you that? I lost my virginity <laughs> in that building. And I think a room in like uh, I don't remember the room. I think it was eleven oh four. But uh, yeah, I had some good sex. Oh, that, that was the room. I thought you remember the exact time. No, <laughs> no, the time. It was 11, 11.03, uh, I still was a virgin. It was 11.03 to 11.04, no yeah. It wasn't, <laughs> was not the, my uh, most impressive performance, <laughs> but it did happen with a girl Hail. who said yes. All right. That's the important part. <laughs> well, Consent we were is key. We were dating, <laughs> so it made, it was fun. Uh, my wife's gonna love this episode. Hey. hey! Okay, so you are in town right now because you just wrote a book. Oh, you happen to have one with I you? I just happen to carry one oh, around. I oh, carry it around all that? day oh, now. Now, I went, I got a copy yeah. of it yesterday. You had a book release party at Tannins. It was packed. Yes, I, I'm repping for Tannins. I had to wait, I had to wait in line to meet you. Y you went to Magic Camp too. Well, I didn't go to Magic Camp. Oh, whoa, whoa. This store looks amazing. All right, I'll see that guy later. <laughs> um, I went to Magic Camp. He's got five copies of the book. How is that even possible? <laughs> I went to Magic Camp to perform. I never yes. went as a student, but I wish I did because there's a bunch of fun little people. All right, here, I want to show you. Let's go to, should we go to Marymount, the dorms? Sure. Just real That's quick. a great idea. Just because it's right here. Uh, okay. 100%. So tell me about the book, why you decided to write this book, because from my <laughs> understanding, it's almost, this book was like a lecture you would do. Yeah, so I, it's a motivational talk for magicians. So of course okay. I called it, You Are All Terrible. How do you really feel though? <laughs> How do you? It really started with that joke was I was like, and for those who don't know that magicians go to lectures, it's like a thing. Yeah. We have conventions. There are like at magic stores and magic clubs, they bring in lecturers. Yeah, it's kind of so fun. It's a thing. It's kind of, it's, it is Comedy pretty cool. Comedy should do that. I don't know. I, I don't know fun. what they would like in magic lectures. They would often teach tricks. Ah. Uh, It'd be weird for like Chris Rock to be like, "I'm gonna teach you Whoa. one of my jokes." Okay. Here, <laughs> this is this is this is how close you your your apart your old apartment is to where I used to live. Two, so in 2004, I can I know exactly. It was August 30th, 2004. I moved into these dorms. I was sad because I didn't know anyone and I was intimidated because this is a giant building. Yeah. And um, it's tiny. The apart yeah. the dorms. Have you been in there? I've never been in there. Did you know that Bernie Madoff was just down the block while you were there? He, he lived down here. He was no. He was in the lipstick building. That's where he no, got busted. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't. He I was did running his Ponzi that. scheme not two blocks from here. Wow. <laughs> his well, there was um a bomb went off in a building. What? Like, like my freshman year, like down here a little bit. That's not like good. a little, but no, no one got hurt. I don't think. Thank it was, God. It barely made the news. I, yeah, that's but it crazy. Ha it happened. That's the that's one of the best parts about New York, or one and, of the, one of the. One of the most New York parts about New York yeah, is that a thing will happen that would be front page news for years. Yeah. And it doesn't even make anybody's radar. I remember my dad called me and he was like, I was like, I'm fine. Then a, pla a little plane crashed in the city, like a small one. That made the news of it. I don't know. Dude, a lot of weird things <laughs> do happen here. Okay. And then this place here. This was a different bar. It was a different bar. But the day I moved, this is about me now. The yeah, day yeah, I yeah. moved into the city, I was on this episode of this TV show called Switched on ABC Family. Yeah. And it played the day I moved in. So my parents and I went to this bar and we were like, can you turn on ABC Family? It was like three o'clock in the afternoon. So no one was there. And they were like, there. that's a channel? Yeah. And it, yeah, now it's called Freeform. <laughs> oh. But it was my, uh, it was a big day for me, August 30th, 2004, almost 20 years ago. Holy shit. Yeah, man. We we're went to old. college 20 years ago? Well, I didn't finish. So I God technically damn. could still be going to college. <laughs> Uh, but now you went to Harvard. We can't all be Ivy League <laughs> dickheads like you, Harrison. <laughs> well, now I tell dick jokes for a living. So you it's do. Come full circle. <laughs> it has come full circle. Yeah, and you, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with you because there's so much I want to talk to. But first, 
Where are, we, where are you taking me right now? Well, we're walking down 2nd Avenue, um, and we're going to pass, it's, uh, in a couple of blocks, Mimi's, which is a fantastic Italian restaurant that's open super, super late. It's where I had my first date with my now wife. Wow! And it's where my Congrats, proposal... Congrats, by the way. Thank you. I, got, I did it. You did it. I did it. And uh, it's where I started the proposal, too. So she became my girlfriend, then she became my fiance. Wow. All at Mimi's right down the street. So whenever you're back, do you guys go? Yeah, it's open late, so we, we usually try to go, yeah. That's really nice. And then during the wedding, um, we did this thing where the idea is you each get your own cup and you pour wine in it and then you combine the cup and the idea is all of your cups from that point forward are shared. Oh, uh, okay. And so Cute. our rabbi wanted us to use glasses that meant something to us. Uh-huh. Uh, so the glass that we poured both of our wines in uh, was a glass that Mimi's donated to us, an wow. actual Mimi's glass. So they know your story. Oh, are you, yeah. Are you royalty there now when you go into Mimi's? I don't know. I, I think it's one of those long uh, neighborhood places where yeah. there's, there is no royalty. Everybody is uh, the same. Okay, I like that. I yeah. like that. I, I li now in, in, I live in the Upper East Side, and before when I lived in the city, I didn't find, I didn't feel like a community. Mm. You know, different pockets of Manhattan so yeah. are different. But now I think where I'm where I have where I live, it's nice. Yeah, and there nice. used to be a piano player there named Chicken Delicious. And he was a real character. Wait, what? He was the piano player. You, know, you can't just Mimi's. gloss over Chicken Delicious. His name was Chicken Delicious. He was this bald guy. He wore this like eccentric boas and jewelry. Uh -huh. Really, really great piano player and singer. And we loved him. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to find out when he played. This was like post pandemic. Uh -huh. Like when is he playing? What, what are his oh, days? Oh no! Don't tell me. And we me. went on Yelp, and somebody said, "What what days is Chicken Delicious there?" And somebody just replied, "He dead." Ah, and then we googled no. it, and he what? He dead, but he dead for real. He dead. He dead, and oh, that's no. how we found out. Was it a Yelp review? He dead. He dead. Um, did, did COVID get him? Um, I don't. I don't know. Uh, oh. It was a shame though, because he was amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's too He's bad. A, real, a true New York character. So where is it? Is it right up here? It's right to the left over there. Oh, that's Mimi's so cool. Mimi's Italian. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, this place. Oh, I see it. Okay, I never went. I never went there. You probably when I went to Madame Maquette's when it was the, the bar previously. Maybe. There was a lot of underage drinking. Oh yeah, I back in the day over there. I didn't do a whole lot of drinking underage. Really? Not a lot. Maybe like four times. I think that was like the majority of my college experience. Yeah. Well. There was there was a lot of drinking that when I look back, I go, how did I even survive? Here, let's get a shot of Mimi so people can see what we're talking about here. It's on the corner of 51st and Second. Is that it? 52nd yeah. 52nd and 52nd Second. 52nd and 2nd. There it is. Right there, Mimi's. Where Harrison became a man. Yeah. yeah. In, in a way of you was, have a wife now. Yeah, and it was a fun proposal because it was like kind of the pandemic. It was still the pandemic to yeah. outdoor dining. Should we uh, walk to first or where do you want to go? Yeah, or we keep walking down or, oh, you wanna, or yeah. wherever you want to go. Yeah, let's go. Is there a park over here by the bridge? Or no, that's, up, that's 59th, right? Yeah, that's 59th. Ah, all right. But we can walk that way. Or whatever you want. I mean, this is your, like, you're only home for 48 hours. Pretty much. I feel honored <laughs> that you got to, you get to spend some time with me. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, I love this place. And this place opened so late. That was the beauty of it was my first date with Emily did not go well because there was a little bit of a miscommunication. She thought she was meeting me after my sets. Uh -huh. And I thought I was like, no, no, you're going to come see my stand up. And then we're going to go out Wait, for drinks. Wait, the first date you took her to your shows? I had shows. Dude, you took her to your shows the <laughs> first date? I took her. It, you know what? That really feels, it's like a double or nothing. If she can deal with that, uh -huh. then you know she's probably going to keep That's her. very true. And also, like, what a good test of, like, you know, is she, if she's a fan then, right? Right. If she hated my comedy, hated that would have been, been rough. Be very, very, <laughs> Gina, my wife, she saw me perform before I even knew her. She asked if I could perform at like a birthday party or something. This was back in the juggling days, of course. And then I was like, oh, I live in New York. And then, but she- Was she still in Wisconsin? Yeah, she was, yeah, we did long distance for like three years. Oh, wow. So she kind of, I, I wouldn't say she was a fan, but she knew, she had seen my work too. So it, make, it makes it kind of easier too, because then you don't have to explain to them what you do. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm saying like to them, like they're idiots. No, they're very smart. Women are very smart, obviously. But I'm just saying, like, you have to, you know, I do a comedy at night. Like, what? What? Are you good? Are you funny? Is it weird? Is it sad? And then... Well, part of that, too, yeah, I think if you're like, hey, I'm a comedian, they're like, wait, but like, that's your full time job? Yeah, that happens. That happens. And more... are you good enough for it to be your full time job? Like, True. Is this going to be a life worth living? <laughs> True. We're still trying to figure that out. Some, yeah. some months are very. Dicey. She didn't know she was agreeing to move to Las Vegas in four days. Okay, so let's go back to this because I was at the comedy cellar with you, and I, yes. you're, you're coming, you're going down to the VU, you're coming up, and you're talking with, I think it was Simon Painter. 
Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, what's this? You're like, oh, I'm working on something. With, you guys to see me for something. I'm like, oh, okay, you're kind of being sly. A little <laughs> sly. Yeah, but honestly, I didn't want to jinx it. Sure, which is totally fair. And you don't, look, we're friends, but you don't have to tell me everything. You know what I mean? And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I get a message from Todd Robbins. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, um, do you want to host the mermaid parade with me? Harrison was going to do it, supposed to do it, but he just moved to Vegas for a year. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. And this is how I find out that you just left. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I was like, well, thank you for leaving because I will take the gig. And, and then... Um, that was one yeah. of the saddest gigs I had to give up to go to Las Vegas. I love Coney Island. And I love the Mermaid Parade. Yeah, it was and my I first was, time. That thing was, I was, I was so, I wanted to do it. I was so excited to do it. Well, I was, it was so excited. It, it was my first time and it was so it's fun. Incredible. But I don't think I'd be asked back because I didn't really know what kind of energy to bring. It was fine. It, it went well. I was hot. But uh, yeah, I but didn't know what to expect. Hot. Um, okay, so how did this all happen? Like, how did you headlining a Cirque show come to be? Because I also heard that you were only supposed to be there for like a week or two or something to get it for off. For one day. For one day. Okay, so you, you, you talk now. Yeah, Simon had seen me perform. I, I worked with him on The Illusionist. Yes. Um, his company got bought up by Cirque du Soleil. So Mad Apple started to come together at New York, New York. Um, there's already a, a couple other comedians in the mix. Mm -hmm. I get a call on a Saturday. I'm literally coming over the bridge that we're about to pass. Wow. I'm in a cab from the airport. I just done a gig in North Carolina. Very fun. Uh, I'm coming back. I'm like finally getting back to my apartment. And I get this call that says, hey, if we put you on a plane tomorrow morning, can you be in the show tomorrow night? Can you be in the show? Yeah, it's Saturday night now. We're going to book you a flight. Uh, the flight didn't get confirmed or booked till like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Saturday. What? I was on a plane at set four hours later. And then I was in a Cirque du Soleil show Sunday night. It, we were, they were basically in like audience previews. Uh huh. They, ha we hadn't hit the, they hadn't had the official opening night. Okay. I brought like three pairs of underwear okay. just to be safe. Oh, okay. In case um, you wait. They said you're gonna, definitely gonna do one show, and if the guy uh, if the guy doesn't come back, you might do two shows. Who was the guy? Uh, well, they had they had a whole cast, and so like one of the one of the uh, I was filling in that night for oh, one of okay. the comedians. Okay, yeah. got it. And then they said actually. Uh, he's gonna be back, but like you should stick around. Stick around. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Huh? So all, right. all of a sudden, I, I'm now. By the way, I'm, this isn't usually how it works. No. Right? Like it's I don't crazy. think. It's crazy. I'm calling Emily, my now wife. Yeah. Being like, I think I'm I'm gonna stay in Vegas for a few more days than I expected. <laughs> so I do the show a second time. Yeah. Then they say, And how's it going? How's like the performance? And what are you doing? Well, it's happening so fast that they're like, just do you. Just okay. do your stuff. Okay. We're, all they're teching is making sure that I know where I need to be standing and okay. the microphone's on. Got it. That's basically it. And your time, like how much time you're doing. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. But there, there's no rules or restrictions. Like just do you. Like we want okay. a New York comedian. Got it. Jew. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm doing I'm doing the act, and then uh, by the end of that week, I, they kept they stuck me they had me stick around to the end of the week. Uh -huh. And then they offer me a contract to headline the show for that over is, a year. Yeah. Wow. Then I had to call Emily and say, hey, I can fly back to New for York. For over a year. I can fly wow. back to New York for the next four days. And then I'm stuck in Las Vegas doing the show 10 times a week. And so how did that call go with Emily? Because if the... I call my wife, I'm like, hey, well, guess what, baby? We're relocating to Vegas. She, we, it'd be a long conversation. I had this weird feeling that like, they, I kept getting calls for gigs that would have stuck me in Vegas. Yeah. So about a month or two before that call, I took Emily to Las Vegas for her birthday. It was the first time she was ever in Las Vegas. I'm like, you should <laughs> see this place. Because I had this weird feeling, it's going to be, you, sh you need to see the place. Yeah, yeah, that made sense. So when I called her and said like, hey, remember how I was like, you need to see that place? Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to live in that place? And she packed up her apartment, my wow. apartment, our dog, the cat. How much time did she have to do this? She had a little bit more time. I was living out of the New York, New York hotel for a month and a half. So I moved Yikes. from New York. Is that where the show is in the New York, New York hotel? Yeah. So uh, I moved from actual New York sense. to the New York, New York hotel to be in a show about New York. So it's like being from Mexico and moving into Epcot. That's, that's <laughs> That is it's, funny. It plays with your head. Yeah, I would imagine. I would, I would imagine. I would, like you, you get in a cab, you say bye to the Chrysler building, and then you walk up to the, another Chrysler building. Yeah, a smaller version. Surrounded by a roller coaster. Yeah, wild. Yeah. So cool. Um, yeah, in my room, I was a month and a half in the same room in New York, New York. They, they're all they're all near the roller coaster. Oh, so you just hear it all the time? Yeah, which is kind of nice, because like in regular New York, you also hear people screaming. Well, that's true. That is very true. So it's good. I lived in a hotel for one month as well in Macau, 
oh, at the Venetian, Lord. but I had to share my single person hotel room uh. with Ben Seidman. Oh, but that's good. Ben's nice. Oh yeah, we're 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 brothers, so it was it was fine. Oh, okay. But that's it was good. but it was, you know, still a little it was hard. It wasn't easy. No. You know. That the room was not designed for two people. <laughs> not at all. We had our own bed, which was nice. Nice. But and yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> now you're okay, so you're in this show and you did you ever feel like okay, I'm going to be in this show now for a year, but like it's kind of I'm going to lose my momentum, my stand-up momentum. Do you ever think about that or was it did that cross your mind? I wish I could tell you there was a lot of thought that when the decision happened so fast. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. That there wasn't much thought other than like, this is really cool. Like, yeah. I, the cast is cool. Cirque du Soleil's never had a stand-up comedian before in wow. a show. That's really cool. That's crazy. Uh, they're giving me a lot of creative freedom to actually like do my act. That's which is, really nice. Um, like, it's uncensored. Wow. Which is important. So you could whip your dick out and no one would care? I probably could. Do it. Do it. <laughs> well, you, you've done that naked comedy show, right? I did it back in the day in Boston. Wow. I was, it was the first gig I ever got paid for. I was still in college. I did the gig, and then Andy Ofeis, who ran it, gave me a $20 bill as I was putting my pants back on. And I was like, oh my god, I just got paid to do stand of comedy. That was your first paid <laughs> gig? I also feel a little bit like a whore. Is that in the as book? I pulled my, that is not in the book. It should but be. But now it's out on the internet. There you go. <laughs> yeah. This streams Ooh. right to the internet. Hello. Love it. Uh, that is so awesome. So let's go back for a second to, to Mad Apple. Um, so you're doing 10 shows a week. Oh yeah. Um, I bet I, I had some friends go to the show and they said you were so funny. Oh, um, thank you. They loved you. And they're like, do you thank know- Thank you, those friends. They're like, <laughs> they're like, do you know this guy? I'm like, yeah, I, I know I know Al Harrison very, very <laughs> well. And, um, and so I'm sure you've met a lot of cool people who have come seen you after the show, say, come say hi. Or like you yeah. hear that there are like celebrities in the audience. Yeah, I mean, who, who have you met? So she. We've had some cool people. Um, Miranda Lambert came by. She was really, really sweet. That's cool. And then we got to uh, Emily and I got to see her show. Did you take selfies during her show? I did not take selfies. Although, yeah. months before that, I, I clocked that behavior. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like she's performing and they're facing away from her in order to take the selfie with her. Yeah, it's kind of that's Which, kind of It's cool. weird to tur face the wrong direction at a show. Yeah, it's just a quick photo. I don't know. What's your problem? Whatever. <laughs> What's the deal? All right, so, okay, Miranda Lambert. She was there, we had Shania Twain swing by. Wow, that's so cool. Um, David Copperfield has swung by. Wow. A lot of magicians. Um, it's, uh, Las Vegas is like the, the smallest big city in the world. A lot of magicians, now. A lot of magicians for sure. So you're pretty much having like your childhood idols come watch you perform almost every night. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been pretty wild. <laughs> I mean, has, um. Speaking of Las Vegas magicians, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about our favorite oh. Las Vegas headliner. Which, oh, I see. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I, there's nothing I like more than shitting on Chris Angel. <laughs> it's, he's never done anything to me personally. Wait, who? Exactly. <laughs> I spent, the only thing I'm mad at him for is treating my friends poorly. Hey, but yeah, but yeah. also, I spent like $300 a ticket once to see his show. So bad I walked out. I was like, this, I've never walked out of a show I don't. Before. I actually don't think I'm allowed to see the show. Oh, you're, you're definitely not allowed in the theater. Yeah, I think, I think I'm on a no-no list. So do you want to talk about how you're, it's not, it's not, God, it's not really like a rivalry, right? No, but I don't, I don't want to be his arch nemesis. <laughs> no. It's not, I, I don't care. And you don't want, when people search your name into Google, have Chris Angel <laughs> pop up right next to yours. That's terrifying. No, that would be so scary, dude. <laughs> that would be. I do, I do this roast every year. It's called like the State of the Magic Union. All right, State um, of the Magic Union There's a State of the roast. Comedy Union at Montreal yes. where they make fun of everything that happened in comedy. Mm -hmm. I thought we needed one for magic. Great idea. And so I Because would, magicians take themselves way too seriously oh, sometimes. It's, it's, oh, it's almost easier that, I think it's easier than a comedy State of the Union in that <laughs> sense. Like, yeah. there is so much to talk about. <laughs> I would imagine. And it's all insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, so I roast everybody. And at everybody. the end of one of those roasts, um, I mentioned the fact that Chris had opened a restaurant called Chris Angel's Kabliff, which is Chris Angel's, Chris Angel's breakfast, lunch, and pizza. <laughs> and uh, it, the website is eatblip.com and kabliff.com. And uh, it was not kablipprestaurant.com because I, I bought it. And I uploaded <laughs> a parody of his menu, which I thought was fun. Very I used to work fun. at Mad Magazine, so like parody, yep, yep. very much like in my in my blood. In your and like, what, yeah. Sure. Um, so like a menu parody. I'm like, this is what we did. Great. Like that's that's such a mad move. Um, it was so funny. 
And four days later, I got a cease and desist. <laughs> Which is honestly, I kind of like, it's a little, those are a little bit scary. A little bit, yeah, yeah, totally. Because the, basically the, the, the concept is like, hey, if you don't do what we ask you to do, mm -hmm. we're gonna sue you. Mm -hmm. And even if you win, you're gonna spend a lot of time and a lot of money to right. fight this. Right. Is it worth it? Mm -hmm. And when you when your person that is sending the season says has more resources than you do. Yes. Who's more, more famous, more richer. Uh, yeah. It's, so, it's... yeah, so uh, for, for, fortunately though, uh, Public Citizen stepped in. There's this great lawyer represented me pro bono, wrote a, wrote a response and uh, we have not heard from him since. Really? So is the, is the Until website this still up? No. <laughs> is it still up? The website is still up and right. the website still, I still encourage people to donate to the Johnny Christopher uh, Children's Charitable Foundation, which is Chris's charity. He set up in honor of one of his kids. It helps kids with cancer. So if you go to the menu and you enjoy it, uh, please donate to that charity because they really, it, they do great work. They so help. you're actually really doing a nice thing for him. You're kind of taking the I, piss out of him and helping this charity. I, I honest, honest to goodness, I think his charity is great, and I really hope I hope it gets all the support yeah. that people want to give it. Like it's yeah. it's honestly very very cool. Okay, but then so that happened. <laughs> yes. Then, then this is like my favorite part. Then I heard. Then you were at Amazing Jonathan's memorial. Memorial. Yeah. Unfortunately, he passed away February twenty second, twenty twenty two. So two 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 two. Wow. Um, and uh, no, it was, it was obviously very tough. Um. I, his wife asked me to speak at the memorial. Mm -hmm. I was very honored to do so. Sure. Um, Chris also asked to speak at the memorial. So he went first and I was hidden because I think they, they realized if he knew I was there, he might not have spoken. That's so, so funny. So they hid me in the back. Okay. And then I we got to uh, roast him and everybody else who was and, there because it's amazing, Jonathan. And were you super nervous doing this, roasting Chris while he was in the room? It honestly felt kind of, I, I, the, I, the whole time, the whole time I literally thought to myself, what would amazing Jonathan do? Sure. Because it was, you know, we were trying to remember oh, him, and I was like, "Amazing Jonathan would have done this fearlessly." Yeah, absolutely. And so that that honestly, really, that 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 killed any of the nerves because I was doing it for him. Wow, that's so cool. Look at this view. Love it. I love it here. So when I first moved to the city, I remember like one night, some of like the guys from Marymount, <laughs> which were like there's like five, went here and just like, like, oh, it's pretty cool. And yeah. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And I've never been back here since now. And I like Today. to picture that some of these apartments are just like houses, like it's one person's house. That would be awesome. Well, it look would at be this, incredible. Look at that view, man. That's so cool. Yeah. The bridge. The smallpox hospital. That's still scary. What do you What, what do you miss about living in in New York? Uh, all of it. All of the things. Yeah. Uh, bagels, pizza. <laughs> yes. Uh, not having to drive. That's pretty great. Oh yeah. Do you have a car in in Las Vegas? You have to. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, I drove with you once and it was terrifying. I'm not the best. <laughs> it's okay. You're not, you can't be good oh at God, everything. Are they going to play this at my memorial when I die in a car? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. You can't be, can't be good at everything. So wait, so you, okay, so you're on stage. I'm getting better. I'm getting better as I drive more, <laughs> I think. All right, so you're on stage. You're shitty. I've only been stranded in the desert one time for five hours. Did that happen? I was driving between a gig in Palm Springs, shout out to Marvin's Magic Theater, back to Las Vegas, and I was like, I'm just gonna leave after the show, go straight home. Like, I'll be driving in the middle of the night, but what's the worst thing that could happen? Oh, uh, in the Mojave Desert, your right tire completely blows out. No way. Uh, and you have to call a tow truck, and all the tow trucks are like, oh, the area you're in is where all the tires pop, and we're gonna lose tires trying to get to you, so we're not gonna do it. Well, what do you do? The third tow truck company said, we'll be there, uh, but it's gonna take a while, so you, in the pitch darkness, hearing coyotes in the middle of the desert, you just hunker down in your car and uh, wait in the darkness. <laughs> Terrifying. It was pretty scary. Is that recently? That was, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was pretty nuts, actually. That's fun. Um, all right, so wait, I gotta get back to this, sorry. <laughs> I've been trying to, I gotta, see, I have a tendency to just go all over the place. Yeah. So, you're roasting Chris Angel. Yes. And do you remember any of the lines you said that were used? Because I've been trying to find video of this. I can't find it. No one will send it to me. Maybe it was, it was a private event, so the video is purposely not well, public. I, but I heard there was. Well, I just want to see it. I, I won't post it. <laughs> well, for my for my talk, I got permission from Anastasia to post a clip uh, to use a clip from it. Nice. Um, but it's uh, yeah. I feel one of the jokes was uh, I've always wanted to be as funny as Amazing Jonathan. That's like kind of being as good at basketball as Michael Jordan, or as bad at naming restaurants as Chris Angel. I said, what is he gonna do? Try to threaten to sue me again? It's like Dying Freak, it's right there. Dying Freak, so good. It's right there. So it's right there. Kablip? Kablip is, and it didn't last long. It was open for like two I months. I think it's reopened. Oh, it did? I think. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta get you a Kablip shirt. It's in the shirt. middle of nowhere. 
Really? It's if you're in Las Vegas, yeah. you then drive an hour into nowhere, into just desert. An hour away? An hour into the desert. Pass. Yeah. <laughs> Hard pass. It can't I mean, be. I'm not doing I'm not falling for that again in the middle of the night. <laughs> no. It can't be great either. Yeah, it yeah. was an old diner. It was like an old town. Like, it all was right. the diner. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, all right, let's continue our stroll. Oh, yes, this yes, is nice. Yes. Strolling around. So, you, a lot of people come to you when, uh, like, I come to you, I, I have a new bit. Hey, man, you think this is funny and stuff? But what is, like, the one thing that you see people, magicians and comedians, doing wrong that is such an easy fix? Well, comedians and magicians do different things wrong. The, yeah, the, the two, two separate questions. Yeah. For magicians, like, the reason I wrote the book is. Oh, the book. Let's see the book. Oh, oh, wow, you are all terrible. <laughs> oh, very cool. Oh, I love it. Uh, no, it, the, the reason I did the lecture and then the, and the book was what, a lot of magic are cover bands. Mm -hmm. then they go to magic stores oh, and they sure. buy material and they're doing essentially doing material they didn't create with right. a script they didn't write yeah. based on a performance that was not theirs. Yeah. And then they think, you know, it's like saying you're John Lennon, but really you're like a Beatles cover band. OK, like, what's like an example of a trick like that? Like a banana bandana? Banana bandana is a rough one because uh, you get you get the CD at the time. Now it's, I think it's just a, a download. But like oh. the audio of the jokes aren't yours. It's not your recording. Right. So you're really just a robot. You're just miming to something that somebody else created. Right. Yeah. And the 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 issue with that is more just if the audience thinks like you had any part in the creative process of that. Yeah. Because like when you're a comedian and you're on stage at the cellar, they assume you wrote your material. Oh sure. Yeah. There's there's a. Yeah. As they should. <laughs> yeah. As they yeah. As most people do. That that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, so the thing with magic is really about just creating original material mm -hmm. and starting with the idea, which is a thing that comedians do. They're like, I want to write a joke about this. And then uh -huh. they write a joke about that. Yeah. In magic, sometimes they buy the trick and then they go, what do I, what am I trying, what am I, what do I want to say with this? Okay. And it's backwards. You got to figure out what you want to say and then pick the trick or you figure out, you, you start with the idea and then you figure out how you're going to do that. The, the best example is like painting, right? Sure. So you don't buy blue and they go, I guess I'm going to paint the sky. Sure. Go, I'm going to paint the sky. Okay, then ah, I should, then you then get, I should, then then you I should get, get a blue paint. to paint the blue. Okay, yeah, you don't I let see. the tools dictate the art. The art right. dictates the tools. Makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then in comedy. Um, so you think just to, just yeah. to, so you think what magicians are doing wrong is they're not, they're forming a. Uh, they're kind of working backwards. They should be working forward. So they're, they're getting... Like every other artist. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. Got it. Uh, and that was just something I picked up by doing, you know, straight stand-up for so mm -hmm. long. Was realizing that that creative process really spoke to me. And I was like, why, why isn't that the process for magic? So right. Often I'll write the script for the trick without even knowing how the trick works. <laughs> I'm just like, this would be the funniest, coolest thing to do. Yeah. And then I go, oh shit, now I have to figure out how to do it. Right. Because I'm yeah. not a wizard. That's true. Taxi. <laughs> I love New York. I love, I love that it. that works still. Yeah. In this day and age, the yeah. whistle? The whistle? I don't know if it's, well, I mean, he's not getting a cab. I don't see any cabs. We're on Sutton. Oh, he's trying. Oh, we got one. Did he really? We're on he did Sutton it. Place in 56, walking midtown. We're, we're very east. east. Very east. But I love this area. It's, it's so great. Fun. It's beautiful. Two years I spent in this area, and you spent how many years have you lived in that apartment? Fourteen. I mean, you're not there now, but fourteen so years. I was wow. fourteen years in this neighborhood. Wow. Yeah. So cool. Okay, so now hit me up with comics. What are comics doing wrong that you think they should? That that's an easy fix. Well, it depends on your level, right? Like the mistakes beginning comics make versus yeah, maybe beginning. I mean, start with beginning comics. Beginning out, you got to get up as much as possible in as diverse rooms as possible. Mm -hmm. If you play the same room over and over and over again, you get really good at playing that room. Sure. And the name of the game is just to be good in general. Oh, all over the place. Yeah, you Everywhere. want it to work universally. Right, right. So trying different rooms, trying different places, different locations, traveling over the country, mm -hmm. that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, that's really, really good. So doing the brewery shows, doing the, the bar shows. Yeah, do it Doing all. the clubs, doing the outdoor shows, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, that's the name of the game. And then at that point, the audience will tell you what works and doesn't. Like, that's true. The key is you only bring things on stage that you are happy with. That's the integrity part. Mm -hmm. Like, you do the jokes. You don't want to bring a joke and say just because you think it will do well. Uh-huh. You should be doing it because there's an artistic reason for doing it. Okay. There's something that you have to say. Yeah. Uh, but then you only keep the jokes that the audience likes. That's that's where the audience comes in. Mm -hmm. So like you, it, that, it keeps you both art, artistically honest. Yes. And then also make sure that the jokes are working. I love it. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. That's good. Yeah. When do you do you get a chance to see any shows while you're in, when you're in Vegas? I do sometimes. Yeah. We're off on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We do ten shows a week 
five days a week, two shows every wow, night. Wow, that's crazy. So Wednesdays and Thursdays, sometimes I can sneak out and see a show. Do you, and then you also are still doing stand-up. Well, uh, yeah, so usually on Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'm actually at the comedy clubs in Vegas. Do you have a favorite one, or do you just go to... Well, there's a, there's a comedy cellar in Las Vegas. That's so wild. And so it feels like a little bit of a slice of home, which is yeah. really, really nice. How fun is Mark Cohen? The he's, best. He's the host there. Truly the best. He's, I love oh, him what is this? so much. This is closed, but that oh, looks Oh, they're cool. building a new bridge. Fun. That's really cool. Yeah, Mark is amazing. Mark is unbelievable. One of the funniest guys in comedy, in my opinion. Yeah, he's like comedy personified. Like yeah. he's he's like he's the spirit of comedy. He's itself. always on. I got to get him on a talkie walkie next time I'm in Vegas. Hell yeah! So Although great. walking in Vegas, it depends, well, it depends when you're there. That's true. Well, I'll it be could there be in very October. hot. Oh, it'll be fine in October. Yeah, it should be all right. Yeah, uh, you could walk walk around the Rio parking lot. <laughs> That's probably what we'll end up doing. Walk around. Yeah, not a not not a great walking town. No. And it's all built like every. Uh, many people have made this observation, but like the I, the buildings are built as optical illusion. They feel sure. closer than they are. That's crazy. So you end up being like, I'll walk to that hotel. How do you do and that? Then it's so far. The size of the windows, uh, the perspective on the tops of stuff. Uh, it's all. So they trick people into walking. Yeah, pretty much. It's not a bad thing when you think about it. No, it's pretty good. But when it's 120 degrees, oh, and yeah, you think it's not great. It's gonna be a five minute walk, and it's 30 minutes. It's pretty deadly. Yeah, that, that can kill you. That's not. That's not. <laughs> that's not the best. That is not great. It is a dry heat, though. Yeah, they love, man, that doesn't mean... That the Vegas lives. locals love telling you that it is a dry 120 degrees. That's true. So your lungs are on fire, but it's a dry fire. Have you seen Carrot Top Show? I have seen Carrot Top Show. I love that show. show. I think it's everyone great. makes fun of me, but it's so fun. No, there's no... Re the guy's been doing that show for 17 years at the Luxor, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. And it's so polished yeah. and really interesting and very funny. And, and he keeps changing it. He changes it every show. Yeah. He's also a really nice guy. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's it's great. And there's also the, the idea of prop comedy. Obviously had its heyday in the 80s. Sure. There's a lot more of them. Yeah. But like what he's doing is at this point, like very, like particularly unique. There's not yeah. as many of what he's doing out there. And he's still crushing. And he's crushing it. And he sells out and he's funny. Yeah. Legit funny guy. I yeah. I, oh. I don't know where there's, at some point somebody decided he was a target. Yeah, I mean, he's and got, the guy is just doing, doing the work, just living his dream, killing Wait, hold it. Hold on a second. This is wild. This is why I love New York. What is this place? There's an empty room with a naked lady, headless, headless naked lady. There's and a, a geometric dog. Another some one. Some awards. Oh, there's a feet. A this foot? is wild. They got a bad energy energy rating. Oh, very inefficient not, building. Not efficient at all. Oh my God, D, a D. So, Are they using coal? How do you get a D rating on that? I've never seen that. Oh, That's God. like, what is I, that? I saw another D is rating Is it powered today. by like endangered birds? A lot of the buildings that I think like have AC on in their lobbies or something get a bad rating. I don't know why. I think you need to have just energy efficient appliances and they uh -oh. were just like, fuck it. Yeah, I guess. Our, our air conditioner what? is powered by fossil fuels. A, a D's not even trying. D, you're, you're actively working to put things in that are bad. Yeah, yeah. For sure. God, this dog is massive too. Jesus Christ. That is a big dog. That is a huge dog. That is insane. My dog is little. Your dog is, yeah, you have a cute dog though. My dog you is cute. You have the perfect New York City dog. Well, the best, one of the funny stories with Rufus, by the way, Rufus is named after George Carlin's character in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Look at how big that dog is. Yeah, that's a big so dog. Big. That, that, I did not know that. Yeah. Are you a big fan of uh, Bill and Ted? I didn't, I didn't. I'm a big fan of George Carlin. Oh, all right. Um, and I, uh, Emily immediately rejected George and Carlin <laughs> as names Carlin's of the dog. Carlin's a cute name. Carlin would not have been a bad name. Carlin's a cute name maybe for a kid if you have kids. I would be pretty good. Um, but then I was like, what about Rufus? That's the name of Carlin's character in Bill and Ted, and that's a very good dog it's name. It's a great dog name. Rufus is like, except when you're like, oh, Rufy. Turns oh, out that's yeah. a weird thing to scream yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't <laughs> scream out Rufy. That's, that's a bad not... a bad nickname for Rufus. Yes, that's not great. Yeah, but we took Rufus to New York, New York Hotel, and it looks like outside New York, but uh -huh. it's inside. It's a replica. Oh, I've never been there. They have, like, fake New York streets. There's sewer grates. I mean, it looks like this, but small and in the hotel. And he's like, oh, my God, am I home? He tried to pee on everything. Oh, my God. I mean, because he, he couldn't, I think his dog brain was like, what do you mean this is inside? That's hilarious. I love this that. This is outside. I love that. Um... So but what, kudos to the architects. He, they fooled the dog. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, you're great at uh, writing jokes. 
Oh, thank what you. Is your, what's your like writing process like? Uh, it's the writing process is take everything on stage uh -huh. and then just work the shit. Oh, so you just write on stage? No, no, no. I mean, like the idea is you take the, you work on the bit. Yeah. And when you feel like it's ready to bring it on stage, you bring it on stage. Yeah. And then you just work that thing. Like yes. My, my Lightning Roy bit um, took me. It, I worked on it for a while. I, I wasn't. It wasn't getting the laughs I thought it should have gotten. Okay. I put it aside for a little bit. Then when I, I then I brought it back, and within a week I realized, oh, the format is every lightning strike. Ah. I was like, okay, now I have a framework. Great. And then that's when then the, then the work starts again. It's like, okay, I have the framework, but now what is every beat going to be? Uh huh. And it took six months to get that joke into wow. shape. Wow. That that actually that's like a two and a half minute bit. Yes, not a it's not a short bit. Yeah, that's great. Six and a half months seems like the right amount of time to have a. I mean, but that's that's someone. It was still getting laughs when you were doing it before yeah, that, but it yeah. just wasn't where you thought it should be, right? Yeah, ideally that thing is getting a laugh every like ten seconds, like big laughs. Now, are you still performing that bit? I I, I take it out once in a while just to make sure I still remember. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing too now with some of my older stuff. Now I only have been doing stand up for like five years, like without the juggling, so it's a little different for me. So I'm like, I feel I'm more newer, I'm greener when it comes to. The whole writing process. Yeah, and it's also sometimes you'll do a joke for two years, and then, I mean, that the the thing is nowadays it, it feels weird to even say that because yeah. like you're supposed to do jokes for like a year, record the special, and uh, never think of them I, again. I think that's but, a dying um, model, though. I really do. Don't you? I mean, if you look at some of the, I mean, Carlin was every two years. Okay. Seinfeld's every like ten years. Right. <laughs> like, Attell is writes more jokes than anybody, but does not put out a special every year. Yeah. Uh, so I was talking to Mark Norman, and he was telling me that when you're a new comic. When you first start getting into comedy, it'll take you about 10 years until you're happy with your, with your, your first, first hour. Yeah, every subsequent hour comes along faster. Uh, m yeah, much faster. So I'm still, I still have some time. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it is, I, I am scared of putting out like a special or something and then be like, all right, I gotta do all, all new stuff. Like that is daunting. <laughs> but that's, for me, that feels so fun. I love oh, yeah. that. Oh, I would too, I would too. Especially if the special I put out actually did something. Yeah. You know, actually move the needle a little bit. But you never know these days what's gonna what's gonna do it. Yeah. It used to be late night appearances. You were on Conan. Yeah. Uh, but now it seems like viral videos might move the needle more than than uh, than like being on yeah. um, the late show or the tonight show. Well like look at the numbers. Like a social media clip on a on TikTok or Reels or whatever gets more views than some of these TV shows yeah. by like a large margin. Yeah, that is very true. That is true. Um, yesterday was, uh, I saw you at yesterday and I was going, I don't know why I keep waving at the camera. I don't know. You can wave. It's because it's a camera. So I'm like, oh, yeah. we're selfie. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. that part of my brain kicks in. Yeah. I should, uh, I, uh, maybe we'll use that as the thumbnail. I, um, <laughs> it's hard to find like a clip where like we're both like, there we go. There Looking happy in the we city. We got it. We got, nailed it. Um, so it was, I did two new joke nights yesterday. Yes. And I love working new new material. It's so fun because nothing makes me happier than like writing a new joke at home and then going to a, a, a club for like the first time and saying it and it gets a laugh. Even if it's not the biggest laugh, I'm still like, ha ha. There's, there's right. that, yeah, th and that's the addiction too is like, so addictive. when a joke you know works, works, you're like, yeah. <laughs> and it feels like I worked on this joke for a really long yes. time and I've, I've ironed this thing out and polished these so things out. Yeah. But then when a new joke that you don't know if it works, when it does work, it feels like, you, like it's like it feels like winning the lottery. It's, it's, it's so, so exciting. It's so good. It feels so good because- like, oh my God, this worked. I created yours, a thing and it made people laugh. you can do it forever, like if you want. Um, so I thought what I could do right now, I wrote some quick jokes. Okay. And I want you to tell me what you think of them. All right. This is These are all new jokes. Yeah. Only done on new joke night. Wrote them yesterday. Okay, I okay. love it. Hot off the presses. Hot off the presses, okay. So, the first one is actually about Marymount. I went to school for theater. We walked by Marymount. We did. Perfect. It goes, um, this might, this setup might be a little long. Okay. It goes, <laughs> I went to school uh, for theater here, which let's be honest, that's like majoring in homeroom. It's not real. Most of the people I went to college with who took acting super seriously don't even act anymore. One of them's addicted to cocaine. So either way, he's calling for a line. I think you could go pretty, I think you could cut most of that premise getting I think, to yeah, that. Yeah, no, I knew, I knew it was a little but long. But also the idea of like, it's like majoring in homeroom. I think we could swap that out for something else. Okay. Be a stronger punch what do you What do you think? It's like majoring in, uh, I, I, well. In, I, in, in pretend? In make-believe? That could in show work. show and tell? Or just waitressing. <laughs> Waitering. Um, 
or that, I mean, that's the other, maybe that's the other switch is, uh, uh, I was a, I, I studied theater in college because uh, waiter is not a, a major. <laughs> yeah, that's what, well, I would, I would always say, yeah, I'm just doing the acting thing until my waiter and career takes off. Right, there you go. But, uh, but the calling for a line joke is supposed to be like the big punch or there. Or any of the schools. You could talk about like any of these like performance art schools. They always brag about how many actors, like famous actors will come out of the yeah, school. Yeah, that is true. But when you look at the numbers, it's like two per year. Yeah, it's not. So the numbers aren't on your side, Mary Mount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I, I was a betting man, this is a bad bet. Marymount had some pretty uh, good Their people. The numbers are pretty good. But, but, but I mean, for the amount of people they take in that that they that they push out then and i only went there for two years they should have to put out a pie chart they say these are they 10 really famous should. people that came out of the school and these are the ten thousand nannies and yes oh i did nanny there we go i did nanny <laughs> as yeah. we passed pj clark's there we go um but i like this is uh, where the proposal e ended basically did it really because there was the little clues hidden all over the neighborhood we oh, walked by some of the scavenger places. hunt well, she went on a, on a hunt. I was setting up at the final location. She knew, right? She knew what was oh, going yeah, on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as the thing started, she knew what was going on. I was oh, like, basically like, you're going to have to find me if you want me to propose to you. Wow. And so she had, would scan these little QR codes that I hid in these different restaurants and stores. And PJ Clark's, when she scanned that one, she had to trace her path of all the places she went. Turns out she made a big heart. Oh. And then at the end of it, we went to the roof of my building, and I set that up for the proposal. There's candles. It's very bachelor. I love that. The bachelor. And, did you uh, film this, or did you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh. it was the pandemic, so we had uh, Ruben Moreland filmed it. Oh, yeah. He did an incredible job. Oh, I'm sure he did. Uh, and it was very cold. That's so. God bless him and my and my now wife for doing this in January, running around oh, outside. January. It was, we knew it would be cold. I didn't realize it would be very, very cold. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take it back home here. Oh, all right. We are having good time the here. Dwayne Reed the Dwayne Reed still here. No, so much this changes, used to be an outback right? steakhouse I remember, remember that? that yes and the kids meals had the same size cheeseburger as the adult meal pretty much ah. but it was way cheaper and I, I was a starving comedian yeah so I had to pretend I had a child and so I believe this outback steakhouse thought I was a 21 year old with a 12 year old child that's hilarious I don't know how the math works out but uh, it worked out in my favor because I got very cheap cheeseburgers and, oh that's there you go <laughs> I, I remember they had a convenience store at this in the dorm building and I would, uh -oh. I would uh, have a little five-finger discount a few oh, times. No. Yeah, it was not, <laughs> I grow, like, it's hard to go to school here when you're broke. It's really hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I lived off of dollar pizza for oh, a very yeah, long totally. time. Like and that really pizza. fucks your math up. Not bad. Because you'd be like, how much is that drink? And they're like, $14. And you're like, yeah. that's almost two full pies of pizza. That's crazy. That I would rather crazy. have two pies of pizza. <laughs> Absolutely. Than one drink? Yeah. You you out of your oh, mind? Yeah. It changes your math. I got a lot of falafel. I did a ramen. lot of hot dogs on the street. On the street? Like, you know, the hot dogs. You never got much of Rudy's? Mm. Rudy's was a bar in Hell's Kitchen, and with every drink, you got a free you got free hot dogs. Oh, there was one that gave you pizza, right? Like a little alligator pizza. Alligator Lounge, yes. Crocodile Lounge. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. There was a comedy show at one of the lounges, the, the Brooklyn one, the Alligator Lounge. Yeah. I think that was Alligator. Was it good? The pizza was actually pretty good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah I lived... You got one free pizza for like basically per drink. It was like... A hot, like two hot dogs for like three dollars. Oh, know, that's when I'm like yeah. be walking back. I mean, it's 2004, you true, know, when true. I was like walking back to a dollar from pizza school. was a dollar. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 100 percent. It still is, but it's not great. There's a couple of dollar pizzas I've been to here. And then they're like, that's a dollar fifty. And I'm like, then you need to change the side. There is there's one by New York Comedy Club. The that is dollar. That I think it's a dollar one or it's cheap. It's really good. They, you, they used to give you the penny back. It used to be 99 cent pizza and they right. would give you the penny back. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, fine. It's dollar pizza. Yeah, we're keeping the. No one's going to not go over this penny. That's true. That's true. And but I was fine with it. New York has great pizza, but you're going to hate me. I still love Domino's. I think it's like it's so good. Emily really likes Domino's. It's good. I, um, I love, um, it's John's, right? The pizza right, right by the cellar. Yes. That's yeah. the best. Yeah, John's is good. It's like the best sort of like classic regular slice yeah the one that's like two blocks away yeah 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 that one yeah that one's good and that my i remember when we, the pandemic was just we were just getting to go out and do spots like mm -hmm. at the cellar and all those places and i remember getting putting a feast together for emily because there was a bunch of foods we hadn't had in a long mm -hmm. time and we got one a pizza from there a slice from artichoke wow the palm frites yes and the falafel you just went down mcdougal went right down mcdougal and yeah. we ate like kings and it was great that it is so great. cool a uh, couple more questions real quick. Of course. Now that you're headlining the Cirque show in Vegas, there's yeah. a lot of press, a lot of promo with you involved. Yeah. A lot are of walks you, are, with GoPros. Are you getting, yes. <laughs> well, and this is really going to blow you really up. This is really fun. Are you getting recognized now? I do get recognized on occasion in Las Vegas. I'm on all the billboards. Right. Which I've is seen it. The, the, 
So for the wedding, we had a rehearsal dinner, and we're like, where do we do it? And there's this great place called Brewdog, which is this rooftop, yeah. right across from New York, New York, actually. And it has this really great view of the strip. We're like, this would be a great rehearsal dinner place, because it's like, hey, we're in Vegas. Yeah. You might as well show Vegas. Yeah. We booked that like a month before the wedding. Between booking it and the wedding, Cirque decided to put the Mad Apple ads on every screen on the strip. Love it. So we had a rehearsal dinner where about Love every it. three to five minutes, I would appear on every billboard, and everybody thought that's why I booked that restaurant. Is it the one where you're like jumping up like this? Yeah, and I'm like, like I'm doing it like in the rant, I'm like yelling. Oh, okay, at one point. okay, all right. Yeah, there's two shots, but it's okay. just like. Everybody thought, as I swear to you. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. But we booked it. That was not a thing. That's crazy. Yeah. That's that was, wild. I remember the first time we left Las Vegas, to, we came to New York. Yeah. Because uh, the, first, the first break I got, I was like, we got to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when we landed back in the airport, I was on the airport screens. And it was, it, that, was kind of, that was very surreal. Yeah. That was very surreal. I would imagine. Yeah. That's, that's cool, though. It is cool. Yeah, we went to, I went to another Cirque show and I was like by, in the gift shop of like Beatles Love and I got recognized because somebody was seeing all the Cirque shows. They're like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, this is our off night. I want to see the other one. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. wait, you can see the Cirque shows for free because you're in a Cirque show if there's tickets? Yeah, we got, we ah, got certain, cool. certain I, like man, family tickets. I love that. Yeah. That's so cool. All right, so Harrison, where can people find you who are watching this and maybe they want to go to Vegas and see you or they want to see your stand-up? Yeah, uh, harrisongreenbum.com is the website. At Harrison Comedy is all my social TikTok. Uh, Instagram, uh, X. It's X? X now. Yeah, it's weird to say that. It is very. I weird. don't like it. Yeah. Uh, Are you on Threads? I'm on Threads. There you Harrison go. Comedy. There you go. Yeah. And uh, if you want to buy the book, Tannins.com. Oh, you have a book? It's here. I can't. I'm reading that this weekend. I'm going to Tampa. I'm oh, doing, let me know. What you I'm think. doing side splitters. I'm going to read the book. This book took. If you include the lecturing, eight years to write. Wow. Three years if you just include the actual process and of writing and laying it out. There are photos in there. Like illustrations. There's so many things in there. I can't wait. We put. It, I, I made this challenge where I, I, there are other books about how to write comedy. The second half of the book is how to like a sort of thesis on like, this is how I think you can make jokes stronger and better. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you're a non-magician like myself, I might still get something the out of the second half will absolutely apply. It, it, I mean, sort, sort of the, one of the big reveals of the comedy chapter is that it applies to any art or any communication. Love that. Those are yeah. rules of just speaking, like, of getting your message across. Yeah. yeah. So it, I think it does have a, a bigger audience <laughs> than just specifically magicians. Great. Um, but where was I going? Oh, well, I, I wanted it to be a comedy book, and I felt weird if a comedy book wasn't itself funny. Yeah, yeah. Because why? How do? You, how can you tell people this is how you're funny, and then have it be really serious? Right, right. So that became the real challenge: is making the book like. There's a lot of jokes. I tried oh, to put like. There's like two or three jokes. A paragraph. Woo! I can't that wait. That was the goal. Man. Yeah. I'm excited to read it. Harrison Greenbaum, thanks for doing this, of man. Of course, it's so good to you, see you. You have a lot of time in the city, so I'm really happy we yeah. got this done. I'm about to run out and do spots. Yeah. Are you really? Where are you tonight? I'm at The Cellar, I'm at Westside Comedy Club, Stand Up, Com Stand -up New York. Nice. I'm running all over the place. All right, well, yeah. it, catch Harrison in the city on his days off or in Vegas when he's working. Yeah, Matt Apple at New York, New York. Follow yeah. me at Harrison Comedy. Follow Marcus. Follow him, follow me. Follow him, follow everyone. All right, talkie walkie. <laughs>